Welcome to Let's Talk About CRPS, a podcast brought to you by MTI directly from Italy. We will talk about the latest news and treatments, patients' experiences, and exclusive interviews of CRPS experts. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website, crps-treatment.com. Let's take off! Hi guys, this is your host Emily and today in Let's Talk About CRPS we have a super special guest. We have Terry with us. Terry um, is a CRPS warrior that came to us in 2022 and uh, yeah. Hi Terry. Hi, how are you? <laughs> I'm great, how are you? Oh good, it's so nice to see you. I wish I could give you a big hug. I, I just love you guys so much. I'm so excited to be here. Oh yeah. thank you, we're so excited to have you. Why don't you tell everyone that's listening a bit about your story? Okay, well mine started, my CRPS was actually triggered by having thoracic outlet syndrome, which is also a very rare condition People think that is neurological, but it's vascular. And so they actually had to cut out a rib here mm -hmm. and a rib here. So when I had the right side done, I was doing really good. And a year later, I had all the scar tissue. So they went in, they took it, I was fine. And it wore off and I was in hell. Didn't know what it was. The burning, the classic, relentless, cruel burning that never goes away as everyone that has this understands nothing relieves it so i went back to my vascular surgeon and he said well i tell you what let's try stellet ganglion blocks which i would not wish on my worst enemy so mm -hmm. <clears throat> what they do you're an outpatient and they go through with a needle here in the front of your throat mm -hmm. And the object or the objective is to stop this nerve in here and, and stop this burning. So I had five of those done. One almost choked to death because it numbs your throat and it gave me ice and it shouldn't have. Uh, it didn't do anything. And so from there, it was like we've tried everything we can. And so I that was in 2016. Okay. So as I was searching stellate ganglion blocks, I came upon a spinal cord stimulator here in Dallas. I'm from Dallas, Texas. And so I found the surgeon, the doctor that did it. So when I had the spinal cord stimulator, it reduced my pain from a 10, which everybody knows is a true 10, mm -hmm. down to a 5'6". Okay. And yet, I, which was livable, but it's still very painful but it's better than a 10. So in 2022, I checked out ketamine here in the US and I didn't like the results because you would have to keep going back for treatments. And they were so expensive and insurance doesn't cover that here in the US. So I Googled and I found this thing called neurohydronate, can't even <laughs> talk today. And I was like, well, what's this is in Italy but so I got to looking at it and I told my husband and I actually downloaded the uh, brochure mm -hmm. and which was super super helpful and so we thought well let's talk to these folks and let's see what's going on because not everyone qualifies as we found out later mm -hmm. They don't take everyone. You guys don't take everybody off the street. You have mm -hmm. to have doctor's letters. You have to qualify for the treatment. Mm -hmm. And that's what we really respected about uh, MTI as well. So after we talked with everyone, we thought, well, there's hope. There has to be hope for this. And I'm sure going to be better than I am now. And I was hoping for a reduction by from a five, six to a, like a, a three, four. Mm -hmm. That's what my hope was. Yeah. So we planned it. And quite frankly, I even looked at, okay, medical tourism, Italy. Is, is this like a scam or what? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? I was like, I've never heard of that before, but yeah. sure enough, it's, it's legitimate. <laughs> and so we were making our plans with you guys. And I thought, I've never been out of the country except for Canada. And that's mm -hmm. more like the US. 
Yeah. And we were so nervous about everything. But when we received our contract, we were astounded that we would never be alone. Mm -hmm. We would never be left on our own, taking care of hotel and food. And what I love about this experience are a lot of things. Number one, the people. Number two, you do nothing. They do everything. They get your luggage, they help you. I mean, everything, uh, train tickets, everything. And it's astounding that you're never left alone, not even during the treatments. So when we arrived for the treatment, it uh, we were so impressed. I wish that doctors and nurses here cared as much as they do over there because it was amazing to meet these people, Maritza, and right, isn't it? Yes. Oh, loved her. We sang a song <laughs> together. You know, we sang, met everybody, and it couldn't have gone smoother. I it was I I didn't get sick, which was great because I get sick with everything. Every surgery I've had, mm -hmm. I've thrown up afterwards. Yeah. And I'm just blunt. I have. I was very concerned that I would be sick to my stomach, but I wasn't. And that was fantastic. I wasn't tired. I, in fact, we walked around and were touring uh, afterwards, but I know everybody's different. Yeah. I know that's not the case for everybody, but mm -hmm. this is just about me. Yeah. But it was so amazing that the love and the care that we felt and for Kevin as well, because this cruel, cruel disease doesn't just affect you. It affects the family. It affects your loved ones. Absolutely. And Kevin was just so concerned, but you know, they took care of him too. And he mm -hmm. was put at ease because he saw the care and the love and the high level of care that I received. Mm -hmm. It was no stress at all. And, and so when we got back to the States, there, everyone there told me, be patient because in six months, it'll just go, boom, it did that motion, boom, it'll mm -hmm. just all of a sudden be there. And that stuck with me. And that really helped me with my expectations of when I would see or feel results. Because for me, my CRPS symptoms were not just the horrendous torture of burning fire. Mm -hmm. I also had symptoms that my funny bone was constantly banging on a table and that I felt like I was being scoured with uh, sandpaper Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the blowtorch and then the changes of your skin, the swelling in your your limbs of that affected limb, whatever it is, or limbs. Mm -hmm. And also that my fingertips were so cold, they would register 60 degrees. And I've read some are a lot, lot worse. Yeah. And you, you can't stand water. It's an out of body experience to you know even wash your hands, let alone take a shower. Mm -hmm. It was just horrendous. And my hand would cramp shut 80 times, over 80 times in two hours. I documented it one day. Yeah. So I would forcibly stretch my hand open. So it was nothing but pure torture. Mm -hmm. So we get back and, and everyone's family's a month. Do you notice anything? I said, no, six months. I'm, you know, I'm watching for six months. And they kept, I was like, people don't you read because <laughs> I'm telling you it's like six months <laughs> what they said. And true to your word and how this wonderful treatment works, which is again, a permanent solution. That's what got me too. Is that six months, all of a sudden I realized that the burning in the top of my hand and my fingertips was virtually non-existent. Mm -hmm. It was one day it just dawned on me. It wasn't that yeah. I was keeping track. Mm -hmm. It was all of a sudden I realized, wow, I can do things I couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. And I could play the piano again because my fingertips were not on fire like they were, which I couldn't stand to touch anything as everyone knows if it's mm -hmm. in your, uh, your hands or your feet and socks and that type of thing. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I'm over the moon about this. I could not believe the change. And it seemed as though the longer time went, the better I got. And it doesn't go away. And even if we're under a lot of stress, yeah. which 
right now uh, I've the been. Case. Yeah. Yeah, which is the case. <laughs> but even if I'm experiencing those symptoms and I don't have the funny bone anymore, mm -hmm. I don't have the sandpaper anymore, really now it's more of the burning, mm -hmm. okay? But it's like a one or two, okay? Yeah. So if the stress elevates it, I recover so quick. Mm -hmm. I mean, within a few hours, that burning sensation will go down. And boy, compared to never going away, yeah. and the quick recovery, it it is just a, a miracle for me. And mm -hmm. I am beyond grateful. So just for everyone listening, um, you had CRPS in your right hand? Uh, from my right elbow to yeah. the fingertips. To the fingertips. And right. how long uh, did yeah, you have it for? Long. Well, from 16 to 22. That's how long. Yeah. And as people know, it's a living hell. It's not called the suicide disease for nothing. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. it, it, because I'll, I'll be frank with your, with your listeners, because you have to be with this very cruel, cruel disease. And it was so bad. And at the time I was 60, I'm 66 now. But I thought, I, I can't see living the rest of my life in this level of pain. I, mm -hmm. I just I just can't. And for three days, those thoughts crossed my mind. And I am so grateful. Uh, I know that God kept me and that did not happen. But I understand those thoughts. Mm -hmm. And I understand how it's, it's a pure torment. So family support is, is so important. And if you don't have that, find people that do like MTI and they can support you through that and the forums on Facebook can as well yeah mm -mm. so you had it for what is that six 16, years 17. six years yep six yep. years before six. you came uh -huh. and your pain level before you arrived in Italy was it a constant like five six I'd say it was a constant yes uh and even it would go to a six seven again okay um, you know, the spinal cord stimulator did help. Mm -hmm. it, no, it did. But uh, it's and again, it's not a it's not a cure. Mm -hmm. And but it it helped. And I think it helped get me to where I could tolerate a trip to Italy. Yeah. Um, but the, uh, the the treatment, though, is like none other. And it's such that I told my doctor about it and Dr. Will here in Dallas, they were astounded at the results. They had never seen anything like it. They'd not heard of it. Well, they have now because yeah. <laughs> I've given them all the information for the patients that come mm -hmm. in like that. Mm -hmm. So after after the treatment, after the six month mark, were you, were you at like a constant zero, except when you would flare up and then you would go to like a one or a two, like you were saying before? Yes. Okay. Yes. That's amazing. It, it's amazing. And even now, in the midst of all we have going on yeah. uh, right now, you know, yesterday, but it was like maybe a, a two, mm -hmm. you know, two, three, and then it just went down. It was like, okay, because as any CRPS patient will tell you, you can't rest that part of your body on anything for long. For mm -hmm. me, the only place I could ever rest my right arm was the bone right on your wrist on the left, uh, in line with your thumb, that bone right there. Okay. Was the, okay. It was the only place that didn't burn. And I mm -hmm. was constantly holding, resting my arm on my head there or holding my arm with my left hand. I, so for all that time, I, I couldn't even let my arm relax. It was mm -hmm. It's a constant thing, as other people will understand and know, mm -hmm. that you don't rest. You know, pain makes you tired. It saps your strength. It's, it's not only physical, it's emotional, and it's mental. And it's so difficult to deal because there's no answer. And it takes so long to diagnose what you've got. Some people, I, I've, I've read that people think you're making this up. Well, you see the physical changes in the body. Yeah. You're not making it up. Why is it doing that? Why? 
And doctors are not educated, especially here in the U.S., yeah, no, about 100%. CRPS. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And they think it's a neurological condition. Uh, you know, gabapentin, they've done all this. And it's not. It's not at all. So drugs are not, the standard drugs of gabapentin um, for nerves and all that, it, it, neuropathy and all that, it's, it's not that. So it will not be effective. And some people though, they may have some relief. I'm not going to say hundred yeah. percent, everybody's different, but the, you know, the, the cost of to maintain that and keep going. And then do you reach a point with that, that it doesn't work anymore mm -hmm. or how effective is it? Mm -mm. And with this, it is permanent and it's such a better, such a better treatment. It, it is astounding at how this drug works. So how how long did it actually take to diagnose you? From the moment you had your CRPS, how long did it take mm -hmm. for you to be diagnosed? Uh, that's a really good question because I went to all these doctors <laughs> and it was like, you know, I, I went to one doctor, told him about the burning and things. He said, oh, you have carpal tunnel syndrome. I'm like, oh, okay. And he did all these tests. Oh, okay, well, you know, your nerve test wasn't as bad as what I thought it would be, but you still need it. So I had the surgery, didn't change anything. I went back and I said, um, it still burns the top of my hand and all this. He goes, well, I don't know what that is. Hello, hello. <laughs> so, like you put me through surgery for nothing that I probably didn't need. Oh no. So I'm going to say, I've got to think back. That was in 16, 17. I'm going to say it took about three years and what it was, was I finally went to the sports doctor that had been seen for my lower back because okay. I've been in a car accident when I was like 25 years ago, my back was hurt. So I went in and uh, I was talking to him and he was like, oh yeah, this is what you have. I'm like, what? What is that? I mean, I, I was like, what? But at least you, when, when you're finally diagnosed, at least you have a diagnosis, a yeah. name to put to this thing. Yeah. And that alone, the peace of mind is huge mm -mm. because you realize I'm not a crazy person. This is really happening to me. Yeah. And I think that's part of this challenge is to put a face to what you're going through. A name. To say, oh, th yes, this is what it is. Mm -mm. And you didn't do anything wrong. You know, you, you did nothing wrong. Some people mm -hmm. step off a curb. It's nuts. A lady here in uh, Texas, she was she was at a restaurant outside walking in and there was a rattlesnake and it bit her. And because of that, she developed CRPS. Now, what in the world, right? Mm -hmm. That, Yeah, that's a true story. You haven't done anything wrong. No, it's and it's not in your cool. head. Yeah, and little kids get it. Children yeah, have I know. it. I know. You know, followed, yeah, you do. We followed, yeah, we followed yes. quite a few of them. The last one was fourteen, so we see. Uh, I know we see quite some children still. Yeah. yeah. Um, but for anyone uh, listening and and in doubt of the diagnosis, um, mm -hmm. a good specialist that should know about the condition um, is a rheumatologist. Ah. There that's, you go. Uh, that's definitely, you know, if you do have a doubt, that's definitely when you do come to Italy for treatment, the doctor supervising your whole treatment is a rheumatologist and being a rheumatological condition, um, someone who should know about it is a rheumatologist. So if you do have a doubt um, for anyone listening, try to find a good rheumatologist in your area and, you know, just mention, right. mention the possibility of, of, of it being CRPS. How would you say CRPS was affecting your life before before you came here? From the little things to the big things. It was such that my husband and I, we, we have a real special place we go to eat breakfast on Sundays. And I would order French toast and the pain was so bad in my fingertips, I couldn't hold a knife or a fork. I couldn't even cut a piece of French toast. So he would do it for me. Silverware for me was, uh, I don't care if it was a round edge or short, uh, short, a uh, sharp edge. It was just torture. Mm -hmm. 
So from the little things to the big things, even running a vacuum cleaner, trying to clean a countertop, those things, it it really just came to a halt. Um, I did my best to keep things clean and my husband said I did, but it was pure torture. But I also knew I had to choose to do it. Even though I was in complete like all out of my mind sometimes, as everyone will know this listening, because it makes you crazy. Because that's all you can think about is mm-hmm. this level of burning that you're going through. So it was in everything. But I knew if I didn't choose to get up, put on my makeup, do my walk every day, and do these things irregardless of the constant pain and assault on my body, I just knew I'd wither away to nothing. And I've got grandchildren, you know, my husband, my kids, and I was like, okay, I feel like a former shell of myself, but they all loved me and they would tell me I still had purpose. Although sometimes I was just, you know, I'm a lump. That's what I would say, I'm just a lump. I I don't have any purpose. And then, no, 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 that's not true. But that's how you feel. Yeah. Because you feel like, how can I function in this society or, or my, around, and around my whole home, I, I would have panic attacks. So I would be ready to go out and eat dinner with friends. And all of a sudden I would just have panic attacks because I couldn't stand it. You know, when you can't hold a knife or fork yeah. and you want to be around your friends and that's all you're thinking about is this assault on your body and this burning and you know your hands all curled up because it's cramping and then all that goes on you you don't want to be the focus of attention you don't want that i just want to be a normal person but but you're not a normal person so it was debilitating uh i went on permanent disability because of it here in the united states yeah you know i was i'm and i'm still on it because the cold can't affect it but not like it did you know but it's just precautionary for me uh, because at times it really helps me Mm -hmm. um And also, I think what your listeners also can relate to and nobody talks about is the intimacy. So, you know, it, when you can't hold a knife (laughs) and all you can think about is how bad this is, this burning, this sandpaper, the cold and all that, really? Okay. I want to say that's the last thing on your mind. It's like. It, you, you, just, you just physically, you're just emotionally, mentally, you're just like, it's like, no way, you know, mm-hmm. no way. And luckily, I'm very, very blessed with a husband that understands that. And he has been nothing but supportive. As I know, you guys saw when we were in Italy, he is always looking out for me. And not everybody has that kind of support. Yeah. And I, I wish I had some kind of a word to to give people that could change it if you don't have it Mm. but the best advice is to find just one person that you can lean on because you need that you need someone to say you know it's going to be okay you're going to make it don't give up don't ever 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 give up don't give up because there is hope out there and if you can go to italy then please do, your your life will be radically changed. So back then, what made you decide to come to Italy? What was the, what was the lights that said, okay, I'm going to do it? I, I think it was the, the permanent solution mm. that it wasn't like ketamine. Now, so that works for some people, yeah. but you have to keep going back. Mm-hmm. I didn't like that part. And I thought the way this drug works, the way it heals, you know, uh, the little cracks in in your bones and then the nerves. Nerves are the longest thing to heal in your body. Mm -hmm. It's so slow and you can look it up. It's just terrible. But that it does do that. And I don't have to keep going back, although I'd love to see you guys again. Don't get me wrong. You know, this time just for fun. But um, it's... It was so appealing to me because I thought, man, I have nothing to lose and everything to gain. Gain. Mm-hmm. 
Yes. And um, so, you know, we've heard you talk about the whole experience before, but what, mm -hmm. as a whole, how was the whole experience of um, both the treatment itself and, you know, mm -hmm. living the healthcare life in Italy and understanding yeah. how we work here and then the part with MTI, so with the people you've met and the organization around it. So how was the whole experience for you? I really appreciate the detail that goes into this trip. My whole career, my whole life, I worked in corporate America on the executive floors for over 20 years. And then my husband and I owned our own business for over uh, 38 years, mm -hmm. him and then me, I was with him uh, at 22. And the attention to detail was a must in both positions. Of course. And I, I think I drove you guys crazy when <laughs> you sent me something. I'm like, well, wait, wait, where's the step? And what do we do? I want you to put this in there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but it was so detailed from, from the time from, no, I'm going to go back from before before you leave, mm -hmm. getting that, get you guys, uh, get to you the flight information for us, the train information, is this the right train to take? You verify and you're presented with, okay, do you want this hotel or this hotel? And it, came, it just came down to incredible organization to when you arrive, you're, you're along for the ride <laughs> and you don't have to worry because they take you everywhere and they don't leave you during the treatment. And the way people checked in at the clinic as well, it, it wasn't just Maritza, it was everybody. And that Lorena was there the whole time. It, it was simply astounding. And, and one thing I think your listeners need to know, especially, so let's say you decide you're going to Italy. Listen to their advice. Okay, because there is a McDonald's right there, okay? <laughs> Y'all can have McDonald's, Mickey D's, anytime here in the U.S. Police, people, don't do that, okay? <laughs> do not do not have this stuff. You're going to regret it. It's ooh, not, Now, the cappuccino was really good, though. So that, yes, uh, you know. they told me that. Yeah, it was good. And I think for you to go in and just see y'all's McDonald's compared to the U.S., it was like, wow, this is yeah. amazing. But you know, do listen to them. And they know what they're doing. So don't do the Mickey D's thing. Um, do listen to the advice on nutrition. And what I also love too about you guys is you're available 24 seven. It's not just, you know, 10 o'clock is, is cut off. Mm -hmm. If you need, if, if we wouldn't needed you, we had contact numbers. We knew exactly who to call. Yeah. And, and you helped advise too on, so the day, Wednesday, the day off, or in the afternoon, we wanted to do something. You know, the, the, uh, those special things you have a choice of, mm -hmm. and that was wonderful to be included yeah. because you want to see these things. It, it was every detail that you can imagine was taken care of. There was never a worry at all. You guys are A, class people and i want to tell your listeners that this this group of people care it's not fake i've seen phony and i've seen fake and you know my time on this earth has seen my fair share but you guys are the real deal you guys are the real mccoy as we would say here in texas um so when they say they care and they say do this or that it's for your best interest you will never ever find better than this better now this is available throughout italy but for this experience with you guys this is where you want to go do not do this on your own <laughs> do not, <laughs> you know don't think you're going to get a better price you're going to do this because you're going to be so stressed but at the time you think you know something when you don't know nothing about nothing so you want to go with mti to handle all this detail and the follow-up Y'all's follow-up is amazing. They do what they say. If they say they're going to contact you at this month, this month, they do. You have questions, you give it to them, and you get answers, even though there's that seven, eight hour difference. Mm -hmm. You'll hear, if it's early in the morning, you'll probably hear that night, if not the next morning. 
So it's not like you come back to the the States and then you're like, well, now what do I do? Yeah. No, you have questions, they're available. And that's what your listeners also need to be assured of. You don't just do the treatment, leave people out there on their own mm -hmm. to flounder. It's not like that at all. No, it's, it's full treatment, the full Monty, as they would say. <laughs> Last thing I would want to ask you is what would you say to all the CRPS patients around the world? First of all, I understand what you're going through. I understand the hopelessness it can cause, not can cause, it creates. For those of you that have children, there are no words. I cannot imagine my grandson going through this and my heart goes out. And I wish I could give everyone, you know, a personal hug and encouragement, but I really want to let you know that there's great hope and never give up. And if it is at all possible, please, please give this a shot. We have to take out a loan. We did. We're not wealthy people, but it was well worth it. And don't give up. And if you're having thoughts of suicide, please don't. Please don't do it because you have so much more to give. Your purpose is not done on this earth. And one thing I realized that if I was so allowed to find a treatment that I wanted to help others. And I feel like that's one reason I'm here on this earth is to encourage others to let them know there's hope. Never lose hope. If you lose hope, you can't go on. But when you have hope, you can keep going forward. Keep this information. And it won't hurt to do a video call with you guys. Talk to them. It's not going to hurt anything. You'll probably feel better about things. And maybe one day you can. And I I, I wish I could pay for people to go all the time. I, I would do so. But right now, I just want to let everybody know that, you know, you are loved by these people. And people do care. I care about what you're going through. I understand what you're going through. Don't give up. Keep on going when you have days that you think, I can't do this. I cannot do this anymore. I, I'm just, I'm done. Allow yourself to feel those emotions because you got to get through your emotions and what you feel. You can't file them and don't let anyone say, oh yeah, you just get, got to get over it. They don't know what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. You have to allow yourself to feel that and then pick yourself back up. And that could be 20 times a day, given the severity of this cruel disease, but it's okay. That is a good thing to do. And don't deny yourself that. Keep going, keep going. And I keep saying, don't give up, but please don't give up. Don't, because there's a whole life ahead of you that you can have and you can have it virtually pain-free. Okay. <laughs> I know, girl. <laughs> I know, I'm, I, I just am so passionate and I just understand what everyone's going through. And um, uh, my heart goes out to everybody, but um, don't give up, don't ever give up. Oh, Terry, thank you so much yeah. um, for Thanks. being with us today. For anyone who wish to contact us, um, you'll find the email on here. And for anyone listening on Spotify, it's info at crps slash treatment dot com. If you want to contact us, feel free. Um, like Terry was saying, we do organize free video calls so we can talk about your case and understand a bit more what kind of treatment organized around your specific case. So don't hesitate in contacting us. And um, once again, you are not alone. And once again, like Terry said so well, just, yeah, never give up. 
Thank you so much, Terry, for being with us today. And uh, for everyone else, we'll see you on the next episode of Let's Talk About CRPS. And thank you again. Bye-bye, Terry. Thank you. Bye-bye.